The other one starts when you just hold the strategic plan even in the middle and then come back to it. Yeah. It looks like they're all right there. Never mind. Michelle just threw this. Oh, she just threw it. Okay. Okay. All right. So I call the regular Open Spaces Commission meeting to order for March 27, 2023. Uh, Robert, can we have roll call? Yep. I see that you're here, Commissioner Wilson. Here. Uh, Commissioner Evans? Present. Commissioner Fox? Present. Commissioner Norton? Present. Commissioner Wallen? Here. Commissioner White? Is absent, I believe. And Commissioner Worsham? Worsham? It's also happening. All right. And then do we have council member Deborah Harris? Thank you. Okay. Moving on to the land acknowledgement statement. Uh, the Flagstaff Open Spaces Commission humbly acknowledges the ancestral homelands of this area's indigenous nations and original stewards. These lands still inhabited by native descendants border mountains sacred to uh, the indigenous peoples. We honor them, their legacies, their traditions, and their continued contributions. We celebrate their past, present, and future generations who will forever know this place as home. All right, and next we have the approval of the February 27th, 2023 meeting minutes. Um, is there any discussion or any corrections that anybody would like to make to those minutes as they're written? I think there was only one thing that I noticed uh, with regard to item eight. I think it was Commissioner White that asked about the commissioner's application resubmittal for when their term expires. I don't think it was me. <laughs> but that was the only thing that I talked about. Uh, okay. So with that in mind, um, uh, do I hear a motion to uh, approve as amended? So moved. I second it. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the minutes are approved as amended. And moving down to public participation. At this time, any member of the public may address the commission on any subject that is not scheduled before the commission on this day. The Arizona open meeting law prohibits the commission from discussing or acting on an item which is not listed on the prepared agenda. Commission members may, however, respond to criticism made by those addressing the commission, ask staff to review a matter or ask that a matter be placed on a future agenda. To address the commission on an item that is on the agenda, please wait for the chair to call for public comment at the time the item is heard. Uh, is there anyone here from the public that wishes to speak on a subject that's not on the agenda for tonight? Okay. Seeing no one, we will move on to the business items. And First one on the on the agenda is the introduction to community development. And I believe Michelle McNulty is here to, to chat with the commission about that. Okay. Michelle. Hi everybody. I'm Michelle McNulty. I'm the planning director for the city of Flagstaff. And actually, I'm going to share this honor with Alex uh, Alexandra Pucciarelli who is our current planning manager. She has a brief presentation to do an overview of uh, development projects, and then we will both be available to answer any questions that you have. Thanks. Thank you. And I'm, I'm sorry, oh, no, Alex is on. I'm going to um, make sure she's able to join us. Hold on one second. All right, looks like she's joining right now. Sorry for the delay. 
Sorry. <laughs> We've been in, we were in back to back meetings, so I, my apologies. Hey, Alex, um, we are already up. Oh, wow. Sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> no worry. I was going to start telling bad jokes, but I wanted to do everybody a favor and not go there. Right. Let me pull up our. Um, oops. I have so many PowerPoint presentations open on my or sitting on my desktop. So let me make sure I have the right one. Go. All right. Does everyone see that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay. Community Development 101. Um, you met Michelle. She's the punctual one and the planning director. And my name is Alexandra Pucciarelli, and I'm the current planning manager. Um, Planning and Development Services is comprised of um, several different sections. It includes comprehensive planning, um, who works to develop our regional plan, uh, the zoning code manager that develops the zoning code, and then current planning that I manage, and we review development projects. Um, we also work with building safety who reviews building permits and inspects construction projects. Uh, as far as development requests, we typically see two types of developments come in. Um, the first is by right development. Um, this is typically the easiest path um, to qualify for development under the zoning and building codes of local cities. Um, by right approvals are also described as ministerial. So for example, would be development projects that have existing entitlements. So whatever they're proposing to develop is already permitted in the existing zone, um, or they're developing a subdivision that's utilizing standards of their existing zone. The other type of development is a discretionary development. So discretionary developments require um, a, require additional approvals, um, typically by here in Flagstaff by the Planning and Zoning Commission, sometimes the Board of Adjustments uh, for variances, or City Council. And these um, these officials decide whether or not to proceed with a development. It's usually reserved for development proposals that don't conform to zoning codes. So what we see a lot of are um, when someone is rezoning a project. So they're currently zoned R1, a residential zone, and they want to rezone to HR, a high density residential or something like that. Uh, the IDS review process. Um, when projects um, kind of their first steps is one of them is the interdivision staff or IDS review project process. It's required for projects such as commercial development, uh, multifamily residential. So that's anything that has three or more dwelling units, uh, duplexes, and single family if they're outside of a subdivision. So tenant improvements, um, those are when you have an existing building and like someone like a new business is coming in to rent this, they're renting a space in a shopping mall or something, they might get building permits to change the layout of that space in the interior. So tenant improvements, 
as well as single family homes that are in a subdivision. Those types of projects can just submit for a building permit and skip over that IDS review. Um, both by right and discretionary cases go through the IDS review process. Um, IDS members in our, our team involves all different sections from the city. Um, so I've listed them here. <laughs> I don't know if you want me to read through each one, um, but it's building safety, you know, all the different planning people, um, engineering that includes traffic, fire, um, sometimes the police department will weigh into heritage preservation. So it's all these different divisions and they, we all work together to review these projects. Uh, steps in the review process. And it, these are kind of typical. Um, there's always going to be exceptions and, and different projects um, that maybe fall outside these, um, these kind of typical things. But on average, a project will come in if they are permitted use in the zone. So there are by right development. They would go to a concept plan review, then they go to site plan review, and at that point, when their site plan gets approved, they are free to go and get permits. So they submit for civil plan review, which then grading permits can be issued, and they can um, submit for a building permit review, which results in building permits being issued. Uh, for subdivisions, we've been seeing a lot of these, I would say, lately. Um, subdivisions come in for a concept plat review. Um, then we go through the preliminary plat review process. And once staff reviews and approves a preliminary plat, it goes to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a recommendation. And then City Council has to approve it. Then we typically do civil plan reviews. It gets much more detailed and into um, how they're going to grade for roads and how they're going to bring in utilities. Um, and once those are approved, they do their final plat review. And that, once staff approves that, that goes just to city council for approval. And then that plat can be recorded. Um, Grading permits get issued after you have that recorded plat, as well as the building, any building permits um, can be issued. Uh, for a discretionary development, it's usually similar to by right, as far as if they come in for concept plan, then they go to site plan review, but then we usually do these discretionary hearings. So for example, one that we see a lot that I mentioned is a zoning map amendment application. So that gets reviewed by staff and then goes in front of the planning and zoning commission for recommendation and then goes to city council for approval. Um, and then the same, you know, once they have those final approvals, then they are allowed to submit for permits and permits can be issued. So some of the questions that were asked had to do with, you know, how how can the commission know what's going on? Um, how can how is the public informed? And so this is kind of our typical public outreach. Um, we do have a development status report that's on um, the community development website. It lists all the IDS um, applications that are currently under review or that have been submitted. Um, so you can look through that long list. Um, it gets updated. We try for quarterly. We do our best. Um, and then uh, public hearings. So some applications require neighborhood meetings and um, staff make sure that the applicant is is notifying 
the neighbors around it. And that's a meeting just with the developer, not so much with staff. Public hearings are the meetings with the commission and with possibly with the Board of Adjustments, with City Council. Those hearings, the development site is required to be posted. Um, the applicant sends a mail to property owners within, it's usually between three and 1,000 feet. Um, a notice is mailed to an interested persons list. And that list is a, um, I'll say a living document that we're all as adding people to subtracting people from that list. So if you want to be included, you can be added to that list. Um, city staff also places an ad in the newspaper to make people aware of those public hearings. So that's all I had as far as the PowerPoint, but I have a feeling there'll be some questions. Do we want to do questions? I have, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I have a, a couple and I'm sure maybe some of the other commissioners might as well. But as, as far as the status report, you said that it no, normally comes out um, uh, quarterly. Um, I saw in the past that it seemed like they were coming out like every other month. Um, I don't know whether that was uh, because of the amount of, uh, you know, projects that were going on or, 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 you know, why there were a lot more in the past. But is there a way to see what is current as opposed to, you know, uh, you know, seeing something quarterly or, you know, every six months where there's stuff that going on that might not be on that latest status list? Oh, I mean, it's been our policy to stick with the quarterly. And you have to understand that a lot of those projects stay on the list for a long time. That once they once once you submit a concept plan, even if they don't, if they choose not to resubmit, it typically will that concept plan is good for a full year. So we do have projects that kind of sit on the list and it seems like there's no progress, but that applicant may have decided not to not to resubmit or not to move forward with the project. Um, so that kind of dovetailed into my next question of how long they stay on the list. Um, uh, so as long as the plan or, or their their plan or for their project is still open regardless of what they're doing it's still on the list um, but once a project is complete what happens to those projects do they go to a separate um, file or report and we tend to keep them sorry uh, we tend <laughs> we tend to keep them on the list until they're completed as far as like they have occupancy. Um, and another another list that gets generated is generated by building safety. So they have a list of stuff that's under construction, but rather than making you look at what projects are are um, what projects are being approved through planning versus what projects are under construction, we include all those projects and just tell you they're under construction. Um, you know, they're doing grading, they're on they're going vertical now. Um, so they'll stay on the list until they get approved and they're occupied. Sure, so it does look like uh, um, council member Deborah Harris has her hand up. Oh, okay. Can I go ahead now? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Um, so help me to understand. I maybe this is what I heard, or maybe I didn't hear it. But so a person submits um, a plan, and then you know, two three months later, they decide, oh shoot, we're not going to do this. You know, never mind, forget it. 
does that come off the list at that point in time when they notify you or do you just leave it on until whenever? We, I would say applicants are not the best at letting us know that they're not moving forward with stuff. And we just tend to default to leaving it on until it's expired. But Councilwoman, if I may just add, if someone notified us that they were no longer moving forward with the project, we would we could remove it. We would remove it. You would remove it. Yes. I think just to Alex's point, we never get that notification. It's usually, I think people have good intentions that they're going to get their project completed. Um, and then it, the clock either runs out and they just don't, or they've moved on to the next step. But if they did notify us, we'll, we will remove it. Okay, thank you. Can I follow up on that? Go ahead. Yeah, what, how long does it take for the time to run out? For concept plans, it's one year from their last submittal. And then I would like to follow up on, um, this is Nat White on the commission. Uh, What's the percentage of by right approvals and uh, discretionary uh, uh, submittals, not approvals, but submittals? Uh, I don't know that I keep track of that information. The, the reason why I'm asking from the environmental and open space perspective is uh, with discretionary um, years ago, uh, that was gave the opportunity not to extract, but to work with the, the developer to provide maybe some additional open space, some other things that uh, any code can't cover everything. Um, and I'm just wondering that's if the percentage is, is great on the discretionary side, then there's quite an opportunity there to uh, uh, go beyond the letter of the law as far as protecting open space, uh, view sheds and all the other things that Flagstaff really appreciates and seems to be starting to lose somewhat. If I, if I may, um, while we're not tracking the percentages, most of the time, I mean, you can, when you look at the development status report, you can kind of get a good idea of what all the different processes that one specific development is going to require. So if it's going to require site plan, rezone, conditional use, we try to um, include all of that. And really where I think with that discretionary review that you're talking about, that's really through the rezone process um, where we're going to have the opportunity to have that. And it's still tied to uh, proportionality and nexus and kind of the proportional share of impacts that a development's going to have. And one of the things that we're really looking at is adopted plans. Um, and that always makes it really helpful when we're looking at things outside of what is in code. And so I say that too, is just an offer you all, I don't know if you have an adopted open space um, plan, but if you do not, that would be something that could be helpful in the future as we are looking at cases. Thanks. Thank you. And I believe uh, Commissioner Norton has a question as well. Yeah, hi, Alex and Michelle, it's Mary Norton. Um, on the IDS uh, review process and the IDS team, you know, there's nobody there from open spaces to advocate for open spaces like Nat was saying and we were asking about and that was a, a, a concern that had come up in these commission meetings is who's looking out for you know possible open space opportunities when discretionary developments come through the process. I know that there's a, there's often focus on foot trails and connectivity which is great but we don't really feel that maybe we have a voice from this commission as far as identifying possible open space contributions or partnerships with developers that come along the way. Um, I know that I saw that Parks was on there, so I would, I would imagine that's a member from PROS, but I was wondering if you could talk to that aspect of how could open spaces have more of a voice in that process through the IBS team. Uh, 
Um, so this is Michelle. I'll, I'll jump in and Alex does far more of the day-to-day -day, um, stuff on IDS and with the review. So she'll fill in any detail I've missed, but um, Amy Hagan with Parks and Recs is, um, sits on IDS. And my understanding is that she's not just looking at uh, development through just a park standpoint, but also from that open space perspective. Um, so sh she is weighing in on, on projects that have that. Um, if she's looking at a by right, non-discretionary review, um, we have, there is nothing in code. So she won't be able to make a general, a specific comment that um, something be preserved or making a comment about that from a code standpoint. But we have a second part of our comments that speak to um, just general information. And that would be an opportunity for her to say, um, generally, you know, while we can't require this open space that has been identified by our open space commission as a priority piece of property. And if you're interested in, you know, selling any of that property, you know, please reach out to myself or she could should nominate someone. So there is an opportunity for her to speak to that. Alex, if you want to add anything. No, I think that was perfect. She is. Yeah, we. There are triggers um, for when when Amy is making comments. So she's included. She reviews all the IDS projects and anything that even things that are adjacent to parks or open space um, can trigger her. Her making comments on a project. So. Great, thank you. And I have another question somewhat related and it's really outside of the IDS process and it kind of came up when the realignment of 4th Street was going on and there was discussion with the major landowners and there were those options given for the 4th Street realignment and when it got to council and they opted for that particular pathway, you know, it, it went right by an area, the Hoffman tank that had been identified previously by this commission as a hair, an area of, of high priority to be preserved. But yet, you know, there was seemingly no voice for open spaces at that time to say, hey, wait a minute, there's something very sensitive here. In situations like that, how could open spaces have more of a voice? I mean, I guess ultimately we're the easiest way to require something of a developer is to have adopted code that makes something a requirement. So um, something to consider, I guess. <laughs> okay, so, so your advice to us is we need a plan and we need some code amendments potentially. I'd like to just, sorry, this is Michelle. I think you want to start with a plan because a lot of the areas that you're talking about too are on private property. And so you're going to need community buy-in before you can go straight to code. So, and also the code, the, the plan sets the policy and the direction that supports the code. So um, I think in, in my opinion, the first step would be actually creating a, a plan that identifies the different areas where you're, what, what our priority. Um, I think I had just started about the time that project went to council. Um, and so it was, it was, I had a huge learning curve as far as getting up to speed, but I can tell you that that process isn't over. I mean, we do have, there is, you know, the, there are property owners that are going to have to pay for that road. And so there is kind of an alignment already settled, but um, you know, I know that we've been working with Robert Wallace on, you know, is there a portion, you know, with, with, with what, open space has funding to acquire, is there some property that they could acquire? But um, it's going to be really hard for us to effectively tell people they can't develop large portions of their property. Um, that Legally, we're just going to be really challenged on that. So I think the plan is the best first step. All right. Any other, any other questions from the commission? I, I I have some more. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Commissioner White. Yes. Um, thank you for doing this. It's helpful, I think, for all of us. Um, 
Speaking of codes, uh, the Conservation Forum worked for three or four years to develop um, wording for codes that had to do with protecting rock outcroppings, uh, gophers, uh, hills, other, other things that are, are unique to open space uh, and protection of it. And when the, uh, and I've forgotten his name, uh, who was ramrodding this, uh, moved, everything seemed to have stopped. Uh, and the impression is that maybe you guys are totally overwhelmed with doing the things you really have to do and that some of these things that really pay off in the long run as far as uh, the quality of, of, of life here at Flagstaff, um, surrounded by forest, is, is somewhat being lost. Is that a wrong impression that I'm getting? Um, so I think, this is Michelle, I think that you're referring to Dan Seimer, who was the previous zoning code manager. That's correct. That's correct. Thank you. I couldn't you're welcome. Name. You're you're amazing with your history. Um, so yeah, so Dan left and we did go through and at the same time, um, there was an acting playing director. So I think it was actually Alex, uh, who Alexandra, who was acting. So there was a time where after he left, a lot of his work program did go on hold due to a, a lack of, of staffing. Um, now that we are ramped up and Actually, you just lo you just lobbed me for the perfect lead-in. Um, we just have put out a request for qualifications to do a land availability and suitability study um, to really look at what lands do we have left, what are the barriers and challenges to development. But that's also being paired with a code analysis. So it's a joint project between planning, uh, housing, and sustainability. And so the second part of that is doing a full code analysis to look at all of our development codes, not just zoning, but engineering standards, um, fire, water, um, even, uh, even how we do the traffic impact analysis. And all of that will be done to look at the balancing, um, you know, priorities that we have because Quality of life is definitely, you know, the overall priority, but we're also trying to figure out how do we get the housing that we need, not just for a growing population of, of newcomers, but so that our kids can stay here in our community. So we have a lot of needs, and this project is really looking at all of that um, holistically, but with that, um, that is going to be a lot of opportunity for code improvements, addressing a lot of these different things, but with a really holistic approach. So thank you for that question. Thank you. And Michelle, this is Sylvia from Open Spaces. I just want to let you know that reviewing the code as it relates to open space is on this commission strategic plan this year too. So maybe there's a way that we can be involved in your code review. That would be great, Sylvia. I think that's a great opportunity to align. Thank you. And we'll keep in touch on that. All right. Um, any other just, questions or comments? Just, just wanna, okay. uh, just, could you um, let us about the commission now? How would one uh, get on the interested persons list if they were interested in receiving those emails? Who do they contact? Right now, if you could just um, maybe I'll give your names to Robert and maybe he can just send me a complete list. Um, and And I only say that because this hasn't formally kicked off because we're still in the process of um, getting a contractor underway, but in the meantime, just send that information to me and I will keep a, a list. Okay, I mean, as far as the interested persons list with regard to, you know, the development statuses and things yes. like that, that, that the same thing. Sorry, That's no, I would like public hearings and meetings and stuff. Yeah, I would just do the same. Give Robert your name and he can pass it on to Michelle and I and we can add you to the list. Thank you. Council Member Harris, you have a question? Yes, thank you. I'm just curious, and I'm new to the commission and also to the council, but uh, do we typically review all the other plans that we have, like our housing plan, our climate plan, all of those plans? Do 
Do the commissions uh, review those plans? Do they understand how their what they're doing fits into those plans? Do we have a conversation about that? Or have we had? I might have missed it. Councilwoman um, Harris, that's a fantastic question. So from my limited perspective, I've only been with the City of Flagstaff for a year. I'm not sure how it's been done. I know for the regional plan, we are um, that's being done on the planning section, we are taking that to all the commissions and getting that feedback. Um, Alex, I don't know if you can speak to how the other plans have been done. And then I would just add that, um, you know, that's definitely room for a conversation. I guess I'm just concerned that, you know, we have declared a couple of emergencies and then we've got some plans in place. And I'm just concerned, are we conflicting with each other in our individual commission plans? I don't know, I'm just asking the question. I think it's a, it, it's a very uh, valid and I think worthwhile question. And, and that's exactly what we're, I, I don't know if I'm gonna answer your question, but it's definitely something that we as planning staff have, have seen as a high need is to start prioritizing the priorities. One of the challenges that we have, especially with the housing and the um, sustainable, sustainability or climate uh, priorities um, that we have, and I, and I want to add before I go on, I think there's a lot of alignment in both of those. But where we're conflicted is when there's conflict, how do we handle it and what is the priority? And one of the things that we're really hoping that comes out of this conversation through the code analysis is that we start to have that conversation as a as the community and with um, council and start prioritizing all of those. So I can't speak for what's been done, but I, I think that the direction and there's a lot of consensus among the different divisions in the city is to start making sure that they are in alignment and working out where there's conflicts, how do we resolve those? Okay, thank you. Thank you. And this is Sylvia, I have a question again. Um, if somebody is putting up a fence, like I know that you have to get a permit for a fence that's so high, but is wild, our wildlife, um, corridors being considered when people are putting up fences? How does that work? I don't believe that they are. This is Alexandra. I don't believe that they are. Um, yeah, it's an administrative permit. We have requirements as far as height but otherwise um, property owners can put up fences. And we don't necessarily have a mapped, you know, a, there's not a clear map of where wildlife corridors are located. So too, because Oh, and there is the society Valachian. Let's um have it. I think that established what that twenty years ago. Yeah, the, the the early vintage of the conservation forum uh, developed maps, and then the game and fish also as uh, maps. Uh, a good example is the one over near the new utility yards. Uh, and in fact, that development over there with it's uh, Scott um, off of Old 66, a Timber Timber Scott? Timber. Yeah. Timber um, has in their development plan uh, protection of uh, game uh, pathways. So the information is out there, but again, <laughs> you guys must be totally swamped. And, and I hope one of the things that may come out of this meeting is that there are a lot of people and commissions that are interested in the things that aren't just concrete and, and structures. And, but I know it all has to go together. Right, it's all about balance, right? So, and staff is in a position where 
we have to treat every applicant in some ways equally. And that's where the code helps staff because when we have code, we can apply the code consistently to each project. Um, yep. Yeah. I just want to say this to this group too, just something else to, to take into consideration. And one of the challenges that we have is that, um, and I forget what year that it was, I want to say it was about 2011. Um, Alex, you might know for sure, but the state issued Proposition 207, which essentially makes it so that the rights that you have today, like any other future zoning code that takes those rights away, you can get a waiver. Um, a landowner can file a claim and say, you know, we're filing this waiver. The city has to decide, is it more of a cost to, to kind of fight that waiver or just to, to go ahead and say, give them the waiver? And really the costs are high because not only, you know, anything's going to most likely most code changes that's taking away any allowances is going to be a reduction in property uh, rights, which results into money for a lot of developers uh, and landowners. And then um, the city, you know, if they take it to court to challenge it has to pay for all the court fees. And so I don't want to speak for the council in any way, shape or form, but you know, a lot of these that we bring end up being just, approved. So that is just one of the challenges that we have as well. So we try to do a lot with incentivizing and that's why I really talk about the, the plan. And if you guys could, um, you know, I don't know what kind of funding structure you have to acquire the open space that you're really interested in, but um, you know, a lot of our applicants are willing to have the discussion if we're willing to purchase the, the property. And so there's a lot of leverage there. So I just offer that it's just something to consider when you're looking at your plan and codes is, you know, how can you incentivize things and make people want, how can you make the right decision easy for people? Thanks. Thank you. Um, see, Commissioner Applin, you have a question? I do, thank you. Um, thank you for taking the time to walk us through that. Just a quick question on the development status reports on your website. So there, the one that I have seen is listed kind of a table format, which is somewhat difficult to read and kind of not super user friendly. Has there ever been any thought about presenting those development status reports in concert with some sort of GIS or graphical representation? So it would be easier to see potential conflict or opportunity with open space properties as opposed to trying to sort of sort through them, if that makes sense. I don't know that that's been discussed, but it's certainly an interesting proposal that Michelle and I can talk about and see if we can get um, some assistance from GIS on that. Yeah, thank you for considering that. Thank you. I just wanted to add on, add on to that on the development status report. Is there any reason why uh, an applicant name couldn't be added to the development status report so we know who's who's building in the community for these projects? Um, I'm not sure why names aren't included. I would imagine. I feel like. The development status report started out much simpler and over time we've been asked to add more and more information. And as Bruce pointed out, it gets to the, especially once you make a PDF out of that Excel document, you're dealing with these tiny, tiny little squares. Um, but we can, we can certainly look at um, if we need to add that or modify that Maybe we have to get rid of something else in order to add it. Um, but you can always contact um, contact the planner and ask, you know, if you have a specific project that you're curious about who is the developer on this, um, we can do that. Thank you. And likewise, the many of those applications Although we, we're sort of limited in our ability to share information digitally, 
Um, but we always tell people if you come to the front counter and you want to see a certain application that we can show you, um, you just can't, we can't give you a copy. Um, but if you're interested to see like, what does that development look like? I would recommend reaching out to the planner and setting up a time um, just so you know that they're around. Um, but if you come to the front counter, we can we can bring you into a room or show you on a monitor up there um, what what is being proposed, what that layout looks like. And another question online. So any other questions at the moment? Sorry about that. No, no problem. I guess this is Michelle. I have a question for you, and I and I think I heard Nat hit on it, but um, is there a place that we can, as you know, the planning department can go to understand what the Open Space Commission's priorities are? You want to speak to that? Yeah, I can try to. Um, the Open Spaces Commission helped develop like a very kind of general overview map, like a visionary map for Flagstaff, kind of showing where uh, alignment connections are important and where future open space is important. And that is the initial G plan. I'm happy to send that to you guys. Uh, and then um, Prior to meeting uh, the liaison for the commission, they did go through a process where they reviewed city properties and other properties in town, and they have an open space matrix that's like an internal document that has identified what open space is important for the open space system overall. Great things, yeah. Robert, if you have something you can send, that would be good for us to see. And make sure we're also incorporating that with um, the regional plan scenario planning. Great, thanks, Michelle. Which Thank you. Also, if I can do a shameless plug, uh, we are starting a lot of our scenario planning workshops this week for the um, for the regional plan. And I can put a the flyer in the the chat, but if you don't already have it on your calendars, I highly suggest this group attend um, at least one of those work set workshops. Thanks. Thank you. Any, any other? Oh, over here. Oh, Good. This is the other groups on the, on the commission. I think another, um, Rochelle, another source of information about the priorities for the Open Space Commission is the strategic plan that we're finalizing. And we have a two, three page version of it, I think, or maybe helpful for you all too. Great, thank you. Oh, I was just gonna ask if the, the fakes, the future workshops that are gonna be here, right? At the Aqua Place? Yes. And I just put the flyers, I'm putting one both in English and one in Spanish um, in the chat for you all to download. And please share as widely and freely as you would like. Thank you. Uh, anything else? Um, a lot of good information. Really appreciate your time. And uh, we, we can uh, start a good exchange between uh, between you guys and the Open Space Commission. So appreciate your time. Thanks for having us. Thank you. which leads right into the strategic plan review and revision. <laughs> um, so Robert, do you want to start us off? I guess 
this this is a the request of action on this is it's an informational um, agenda item discussion and a decision on the strategic plans. Great. Um, great. Well, we got lots of good feedback the last couple of meetings for the strategic plan and the uh, under direction of Heritage Down. So they worked on, on implementing these changes for us uh, to just a couple of pages. And so hopefully you had a chance to look at that. And I was just going to leave it up to you to open it up to questions and comments. And Sylvia, do you want to add anything about the revisions you've made? For you? I, well, I did track changes. So we added the vision of the Open Space Commission, which I cut and pasted from the longer plan different section of the longer plan. Um, and then the yeah, and then the goals. And you all asked me to add back in the priority of the properties um, valuable to open spaces under strategy 1.1. So I put those in there. I, yeah. Could I speak? Yeah. <laughs> and I apologize. Uh, I just started working this over. And I'm just going to throw these out. You've done great work, but I'll just run down a number of comments. Uh, I'll prefer it by saying I'm not sure that we're ready to make a decision on this from my point of view. And I'll just go through this very quickly. Uh, just starting with the vision of the Open Space Commission. Uh, the first sentence, I think, is all that belongs in that vision. And that first sentence could be tweaked a little bit. Uh, the rest of it can go somewhere else, I would think. Uh, the mission statement. Uh, there's nothing said about acquisition. Uh, it says development, but I think acquisition is part of the of the mission. Uh, after mission, and or maybe even after open space commission role of duties structure, I don't have anything to say there. There ought to be a section that says how we accomplish, how we do it, what do we do, um, and then followed by. Uh, the goals and strategies. And then I begin in it. I don't want to nitpick, but I am. <laughs> when you get to strategy one, we talk about collaborate to create. And then if you go to strategy two, actively co collaborate, um, I think strategy one is more create. Uh, and there may be some things in there that needs to be reworded. For example, number two, discover how to know when state property is listed for sale. I think we need to be aware when state property is listed for sale. For example, that's that's a nitpicking one, but I think there are a number of uh, wording things that, that we could help uh, with. Um, jumping over to actively collaborate with key partners. Uh, uh, things like one and three are almost the same or could be combined in such a way. Uh, and so on, all the way through, I found these little things that I would never have found if someone hadn't put a lot of work into it to begin with, if you know what I mean. Uh, uh, so, those are some of my comments, and I would just like a little bit more time to to work work on it. It's great, um, Commissioner White. Send us your comments. We'll um, 
include them or we can put them in as like potential comments and then we'll send them all back to the group for review. We, you don't have to make a decision today. Yeah. I put that on the agenda in case the commission wants to make a decision, yeah. but we can continue to have this on agenda until we're finished. Over, you know, overall, I, I, I was happy, but you know, with with what came out of the you know, reworking this, but I, I do agree with that, that. You know, maybe there are a few things that we could maybe even improve a little more on. So, you know, if you can send your comments. Yeah, and one, if you want to hand me the paper, <laughs> the paper version of your comments too. That's what I actually got from Bruce Fox last month. Yeah. And, and I apologize, I'm behind the curve here. And we stand on the soldiers of up shoulders of other people. Uh, uh, I could never have done anything without what we have in front of us. So I promise in the next couple of weeks, I will uh, put all my thoughts in there and don't and don't take offense at them. They're just my reading of them. And, and uh, That's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any any other comments or questions about the the strategic plan itself before we talk about the appendix? So I guess we'll do another review and uh, possibly vote on it next next meeting. And we, we just had two documents um, for you to look at this two page strategic plan and then uh, the appendices as well. We talked about the importance of including the appendices. Uh, do we need to, do we want to look at that now or do we want to just hold off until? Well, I just the corrections. Might as well make it now. Okay? Yeah, if there's mm -hmm. anything. Okay. You. So I think the version that you all got um, under the McMillan Mesa natural area referred to the Arizona Trail and the Beal Wagon Trail, and I did update the wording of that because I sent it out and then went, oh gosh, I was going to research that a little more. <laughs> um, so, do you want to open the yep. yeah, okay. 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 And mostly the appendices were taking out the goals because we were putting them into the strategic plan and just moving things around so that they made more sense to me. Maybe that's not true for everybody. So we have Appendix A, the strategic plan background, uh, Appendix B, which is the which was an appendix to the previous strategic plan, um, identifying and prioritizing open space areas. Appendix C, the authority of the Open Space Commission, and then D, the map. Um, and so, do you go to page six? A little further down. Yeah, so right there where the comment says add something more about the Beetle Wagon Trail. Um, yeah, so that's the old version. Um, the new version says the Arizona Trail runs through McMillan Mesa Natural Area. So if you wanted to highlight that section right there, yeah, down to before me. The natural area is primarily surrounded right before that. Yeah. Okay. So now it says the Arizona Trail runs through the McMillan Mesa Natural Area, an 800 mile national scenic trail from Mexico to Utah, which was the 1985 brainchild of Flagstaff teacher Dale Shewalter. This natural area also holds a portion of the historic 1857 Beale Wagon Trail when Lieutenant Edward Fitzgerald Beale was commissioned to build a road from Fort Smith, Arkansas to Los Angeles, California. In Northern Arizona, the pre precursor to the railroad and 66, using 22 camels as pack in. So just a little bit more history about the Arizona Trail and the Beale Wagon Trail. Yeah, may I ask where you got the information that says the Beale Trail ran through McMillan Mesa? 
natural area? We did a archaeological survey up there, Matt, um, when we were rezoning it. And there is some evidence that just to the north, like of McMillan Mesa, like on the shoulder of it, like through the Buffalo Park area is where the field alignment is. I know it goes up where Paradise Valley Road is and merges into where Mount Elgin Road is. Yes. And then By Schultz Creek. Yeah. And then moves uh, almost along where the 180 curve is. And then, and these are marked uh, both by Forest Service and then uh, the other fellow that uh, I can't think of his name. But I didn't know that it went over McMillan Mesa. I don't know if it goes directly over like the natural area, yeah. but it goes through the general vicinity. Um, I think that the, from my understanding, it, that is limited, but there were a number of like bypasses and routes. Like it wasn't just like one defined route. I think like that's how I understand it. Like, yeah, and, and there is a fellow that I know that's researched that said that he believes, but I don't know if there's any evidence that it yeah. actually went over the narrow place of McMillan Mesa, basically where uh, USGS is mm -hmm. and, and the old road. And that's what the archaeologist said during the yeah. um, the archaeological yeah. survey. Is that just down from Buffalo Park going yes. up towards Mc, McPherson Park? Yes. Where the yeah. Yeah. disc golf, the top of the yes. disc golf course exactly. is, that road goes right yeah. down yeah. that hill. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I guess, I guess. I guess that's the correct statement. But I can show you. Maybe uh, you could say. <laughs> when you look at an aerial, yeah. uh, you can see like uh, like a stand of trees that mm -hmm. have like grown in the old pathway of what they believe is the old yeah. I can I can send that to you. Here. No, no, I, I'm aware of it. I, I, okay. I, I, I follow it as much as I can. It addresses it and from the information that's available. But uh, so, yeah, I guess when I heard that, I was thinking, oh, you know, they that that was a big part of the of the of the trail going over in Mason. Um, so maybe we could say parts of the wagon trail, yeah, or something. Right. But. What I wrote was this natural area also holds a portion of the historic 1857 field wagon trail. That's that's fine. Okay. Any other questions on the appendix? Well, I um on appendix A, um the um the legally designated open space management plan that's referenced in chapter one, mm -hmm. um, should we include that in the important documents at the end? Because I didn't see it in the. That's long. Yeah, but yeah, no, I mean, you can just include the links yeah, at the end. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because I just it, it kind of oh, referenced that, but it wasn't on the wasn't on the list. And then. For me, on Appendix D, those the maps, I, if there was a way to provide a little more detail, you know, labels on the, because oh. if, if you're not familiar with with those maps, you might not know which one. Mm -hmm. So maybe a little more detail on the legend or. Like, yeah, key. I wasn't sure what some of it meant either. Yeah, that would be helpful. Good Martin in is here on the uh -huh. <laughs> on the meeting. He's the map guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tend to be a little bit minimalist, but we can fix that. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Thank you. This is a real down in the weeds comment. But sometimes this body is referred to as the Open Spaces <laughs> Commission, and other times it's the Open Space Commission. On the website, city website, it's Open Space.
space commission. What, what the heck are you? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I noticed that too, uh, Mr. Fox. Uh, so I think like when they created authority for the open spaces commission, they included an S. And like our, our section, we, we've we never used a plural before except for this commission there because of the, the authority it was created. I think that's where it came from, the creating authority. So, so um, I guess, but it, it does make sense just to like uniformly like do one or the other. Um, I, I couldn't agree more. I'll double check that. I thought I had done that and made everything open spaces, <laughs> but I'll double check. Um, yeah, but if it makes more sense to yeah. just use open space for that. Yeah. Meaning the 4,200 entries in here <laughs> that we may have missed one? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Any other comments or questions about the appendix part of the strategic plan? Do, do we still have time to think about it a little more? Yes, we're okay. going to. We'll, We'll take it up again next month after Sylvia makes changes. Sounds great. Yeah. Um, send us all your comments to Sylvia and I and get them incorporated and uh, um, try to okay. get it out at least a week before the meeting. Yeah. That would be great. Thank you. Is uh, Councilmember Harris? Yes, I did have my hand up a little bit ago, and I was just going to just caution us to make sure that we have our facts correctly, because um, if this is going to be a part of the official documents of the city, we don't want somebody to come back 20 or 30 years from now and find out that we put something in there that was incorrect. Yeah. Thanks, Council Member. Thank you. All right, um, moving on to next item, which is a discussion about uh, in-person versus virtual meetings. Robert, do you have any comments uh, before we start talking about it? No, I don't think so. I think, you know, originally we had been meeting in council chambers for a little while, and then when I don't know if it was at the onset of COVID, so we went more work to a virtual realm, and then we've uh, moved here to the Aquaplex. Our office, by the way, our open space office will be here. So if you guys want to pop in and say hi, and that is actually, we're almost to the point where we're set up to be here. Oh. Um, so that's yeah. exciting. And I think that's when we moved. Uh, the commission to meeting here. And we did that kind of on a trial basis, uh, saying like, well, we can try it for the while. I feel like we want to continue to meet in person and it's helpful. We can certainly do that. And I think we did it also an online version. So members of the public that don't feel comfortable can log on or they can attend here in person as well. Um, so this was on uh, our list of future agenda items to revisit. Uh, so it's up to you. I, I think, you know, some commissions are meeting entirely virtually. Uh, it is less staff time for us to meet virtually, although if there's a benefit for us to meet in person, we certainly continue to do that. We also could meet in person for specific meeting items. Uh, it, it might be more for like looking at maps or something like that. Uh, so, kind of, you know, we could do something where we meet in person some of the time virtually some of the time it's kind of we're just looking for direction from from you so this item isn't just strictly virtual versus uh, in person part of the discussion is a high, you know hybrid meetings you know like we're doing now to continue doing that we can continue that as well i mean okay. is is there a, a, you know from the city or or program perspective, is there any any overriding reason why we should do one or the other, but not a hybrid? You know, because I think, like you said, you know, it's, you know, it provides 
accessibility for the public if they, you know, to, to participate if they desire. Um, the, the whole idea of reducing carbon footprint, you know, is also, you know, don't you know, not having people having to drive here to, to discuss um, items. But then on the other hand, like you say, for things that are more complex, you know, <clears throat> like looking at, at maps or, or, you know, that, it, you know, doing that in person makes a lot more sense than doing it online. And, you know, and I think doing in person encourages a lot more participation as well, you know, as far as the commission members and, and getting our ideas out. And, you know, so I, 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 I would like to see us continue in a hybrid, you know, whatever you know, anybody else thinks. And, and Rebecca Sayers, she just uh, put a question in the chat for me. Um, and she said the options are hybrid or all virtual unless it might field trip or something like that. So, um, hybrid is, is, is an option that we could stick with. But the but the meetings, the in person part of it would still be at the top of place. Yep. Is it just more efficient from a staffing standpoint to have it be all virtual except when necessary? I know like PNZ is still all virtual. Um, you know, I, I should be. I think it is, but we're. I'm happy to do it. It's not. It's once a month. Because your offices will be here and sure. and. And Sylvia, is your office here too? Yes. You're all here. Okay, so that not quite as impactful, maybe as not like you have to travel here to set it up if you're right. Here. Right. Yeah. yeah, I definitely think that the commission should be in person. Uh, there's so much you can learn when somebody's not even being taught, but by their reactions and things like Body that language. that you don't see uh, in, a, in, in um, uh, virtual. I think virtual is something to be considered helpful, but in person, I think is, from my point of view, mandatory. And on that note, I have to bug out to go to the other yeah. thing and see all. And I, I need to go. Yeah, Commissioner yeah. Norton should let me know that she has the paper. Yeah, so. I really didn't put much in my report except, you know, I think everybody knows about the hospital hearings going on, and that's in the focus. Thanks, everyone. Do you have anything else you want to share with the commission? You can send it to me an email. Next. Thank you. Thank you. So, so are you? I, I, I need to present it that thing too. Let's see. Uh, so we, do we still have the forum? You still have four. You still have four. four. UI, boost, yeah. and travel notice. Yeah. 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 Oh, and before I leave, uh, I'm sorry, it's late. I got into, I think, school traffic or something. Uh, in the minutes, there were a couple of corrections, and maybe it's too late to make them. I don't think so. No. Um, in reports and the open space management report, uh, the observatory Mesa trail plan updates uh, and the second level bullet that referred to three access points uh, and one talked about the city core services being one, but it referred to it as the north side. Uh, if it's if they meant the north side of the city core service, that's correct. If they meant that's entrance to the middle of Mesa, then that would be on the south side. Right. Of Mesa. And likewise with the Lowell Observatory, uh, since you it might use it, that's the east side. And then the west side would be 515. That way you'd be consistent with the directions of the compass as far as access to uh, the open space on Observatory Mesa. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can I take a picture of your notes there? Okay. I think I'll first
to be okay. So this would be south. Yeah. That would be east. And then that goes along with west. Okay. And then I believe I was the one that asked about resubmitting. Yep. Yeah, yep. Point. And that was something that Commissioner Nolan mentioned. Yeah. And, yep. So those two things? Yeah, just those two things. So do we need to make a motion to amend the amended? Uh, or I could just also bring it back uh, the next month for you. Okay. That's fine. Sorry. Sorry. That, that's so long. Why don't we do it that way then? Okay. And then, oh, I just saw this. Sorry. <laughs> One place we have a nat white. Some place else we'd have a neat one. Oh no, I'm sorry. That was my first commission meeting and I was still getting used to names, so I apologize. G N A T. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's your place? That with me. Yeah. <laughs> well, is there any any more discussion about the uh, virtual versus in-person meetings? Um, I guess if not, I don't see any hands. Um, it's the way it is, right? It's the same. Well, yeah. I agree with the, yeah. I would entertain a motion. I move to have to conduct the meeting as high risk as it is now. <laughs> I second that. Uh, so uh, all those in favor of continuing as we are, say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Hearing none, motion passed. All right, uh, reports and updates. Um, Council Representative Harris, appreciate your patience. I'm sorry, I have to get to the mic. Um, at this point, I don't have anything to report. Unless you have questions for me, I'll be more than happy to answer. Any any questions for the council member? And it might also be helpful for me if um, you someone could let me know typically what kinds of things are you looking for me to report out to you on? Because there's a lot okay. that goes on. Yeah, so. Um, Commissioner White would like to say something. Yes, thank you for being our liaison. Uh, one important thing would be for you to let the council know how our discussions mm -hmm. are going on uh, and, and what concerns us and, and, and what our plans are, things like that. Yes, I can do that. Another comments. Don't see any at the moment. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, so next was planning and zoning, which Commissioner Norton just mentioned about the hospital, um, planning and zoning meeting for the hospital. Um, the open space management report is next. Robert, so yeah. you ask anything? Sure, I'll just go through these. I have we have some photos which I oh. think are always, you know, worth uh, some worth, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, we had a volunteer group that came from Pennsylvania in February. They wanted to do some volunteer work, but of course we had too much snow, mm. so I had them shovel snow. <laughs> <laughs> So this yeah. is outside the Mogollon Garage so that we can get in and out of the Mogollon Garage. Of course, it has snowed more since then, but um, and they also put together seed envelopes for native uh, seeds because we have some 
invasive plant workshops that we're planning and we like to give out native plant seeds at that. Um, and the, the other one with the different colors, those are butterflies. It was really fun to watch high school boys cut out butterflies out of construction paper. Um, and that's for the mayor's pol the mayor's monarch pledge um, if thing tabling events and such that are coming up. Um, and then we did, we continued to do our full moon hikes. Um, this was a photo from McMillan Mesa Loop. Um, there was plenty of snow still on the trail, and there is today. I went out there today. There's still snow on the trail. Um, and we're, the next one coming up is on April 5th, which I think is a Tuesday night, Tuesday or Wednesday night, um, at 6 p.m. And that's going to be up at Observatory Mesa. Robert, can you make those pictures a little bigger? Um, and we are adding an astronomy. Um, portion to that too. So we're going to have telescopes set up at the end of the full moon hike so we can look at the moon and look at other celestial beings. Um, these are some photos of flooding at Picture Canyon. Um, so that top one there is between the educational classroom and the deep water pond. So kind of almost from the wastewater treatment plant. Um, so you can't get across that path, at least as of yesterday. This is flooding at the footbridge, which is about a mile down. Um, you can get across that now as of yesterday, but if you do get across, um, you will have to walk through the water at the deep water pond. So. <laughs> um, and this is um, down below the waterfalls. And the waterfall is stupendous right now. I highly recommend going to see it. So um, yeah, that flooding is going on and um, and it's all good. That's where it's supposed to flood. So um, yeah, and we did a, um, yesterday we did a guided hike of Picture Canyon um, for in celebration of Arizona Archaeology and Heritage Awareness Month. Um, and it was attended by 17 members of the community, plus our volunteers, um, Peter Phyllis, was the archaeology archaeologist who led it, um, and it was a great. It was actually a beautiful day out there yesterday. That went well. So, I kind of have a general question. Then, first one, the volunteer group from Pennsylvania. <laughs> how does how does that work? Does that, it work? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how, how do you get the you know connection? To yeah, the yeah. Connection between the two. So there are a fair number of. Um, educational travel agencies out there and they bring kids mostly from private schools who can afford it. Um, to, um, they started us doing like international trips to Africa and South America and stuff, but during COVID they developed domestic um, programs because they couldn't go to those places. Um, and so some of it is from previous years some of it is they just contact um, the, 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 the uh, tourism people with the city of Flagstaff and they know that we do lots of volunteer events. Mm -hmm. So between us and sustainability who do like this, the um, adopt a foots, adopt an avenue and adopt a section of the Rio, between the two of us, we put those volunteers to work. So we have a lot of um, we have a lot of work with kids coming up. We're partnering with the Arizona Trail Association um, to do classes from Flag Junior Academy, Kinsey, and Killip Elementary School doing trail work out at Picture Canyon too. So partly educational, partly service work um, for them. So we like to do more local stuff because we want to encourage we want to encourage all kids to become stewards of the land, but especially Flagstaff kids. Thank you. Yeah. And just curious about that. Yeah. Works. And people just kind of know now that, oh, I know Sylvia does lots of volunteer events. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, I don't know why I couldn't get in. So, with that, I guess we're down to informational items to and from the commissioners and staff. 
And there were two items on here. Uh, the open space parks and recreation commission comparison and considerations, and then also the open OSC applications to go to the city council. Yeah, thanks, Commissioner. Uh, so I wanted to double check to see if the commission wanted us to place something on a future agenda, discuss the combination of the Open Spaces Commission and Parks and Rec Commission. So we can have an agenda to kind of talk about general considerations and comparisons between two commissions. Um, I think that probably would be the next step for that item. I think that this item came up at a previous commission meeting. I think that the uh, commissioner uh, Applin was uh, mentioned this in the prior meeting. Yep. So correct. So if we have a uh, majority, we can put that on a future agenda item. Okay, so um, I would be good with it. Any other thoughts? Yeah. And talk about it. Sounds good. Um, we had conversation. Will we have someone from Parks and Rec here to Rebecca Sayers, who's the division director, she oversees the Parks and Rec Commission. Um, she's a liaison for the commission. Uh, and so um, I think it would be inviting her. She usually tend to attend these meetings as well. And, and she can tell us a little bit of the history of the two commissions as well, better than I can. So I think that that's kind of what that agenda item would consist of. Um, yeah, that would be great. Rebecca, do you have anything that you want to add to that? Hi, everyone. I'm sorry I'm not with you in person, but I think you're probably happy for that. Um, I was just putting in the chat, Robert, that we'll probably also invite Amy Hagen, who's our assistant parks and recreation director, to that conversation. But yeah, I, I've been around long enough. Um, but I do have some of the history that we can provide to the commission if you choose to put it on an agenda. Thanks, Rebecca. And the other item was the OSC applications. So we'll put it put on a feature agenda. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Okay. Um, there was yes. And uh, uh, there's a number of your terms that expire in April. Um, Commissioner White, uh, Commissioner uh, Worsham, and well, Commissioner Fox. And I think some of you have replied. I so said this is just a general reminder. So if you're interested in being on the commission again, so for the future application, mm -hmm. I have requested that that goes to City Council soon. Yeah, so I, I looked at the working calendar and I didn't see any anything on the calendar yet. So yeah, when, yeah, when, yeah. when they might. Make a decision. I'm hoping that that goes to City Council sometime in April. Gets added soon. So, <laughs> and you can continue to sit on the commission until someone has been appointed. So, like if your term expires then, uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't go to City Council until you know, I don't know, for some reason June, you can continue to serve on the commission until. I did put in a request. That's great. That was it. So was there really a five five names or five commissioners for April first or three? Uh, three. Oh, yeah. okay. The the other one was April first, twenty twenty five. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> All right. Uh, do, does anyone else have any informational items they want to bring up and or share? I would just like to uh, thank the Open Space Commission, Sylvia and Robert, for putting on this thing this morning, uh, which I thought was extremely useful. Generated a lot of ideas and the whole idea of knowing what the left and right hand are doing is, is something that we need to keep working on. So the, the meeting this morning was getting together everybody in northern Arizona who works on an outdoor education. So that we can start collaborating and knowing what each other's doing. 
Yeah, it was a very good meeting here. Yeah, yeah thanks for coming down. Sylvia and Sarah put all the chairs on. Great. And anything um, for a future agenda? Any anything else? Looks like next meeting is April 24th, and a couple of items are already on there. Yeah, for now, we're planning on having a agenda item for the funding and budgetary process that was requested a while back. Can I give you a better understanding um, of that for open space? And then we can have this uh, maybe put potentially this commission comparison if, if we have the pass into that next month as well. Um, those are the two items that we have to go. And then the strategic plan as well. We'll keep that on the, on the radar as well. Any other, anything else anybody would like to see on the agenda at the moment? With that, I guess to go on to adjournment, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. I second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Bye, man. <laughs>